A very good evening to you, our esteemed viewers. We are glad you watch Family TV from morning up to whatever time you watch. We are grateful and thank you so much for loving Health Pot. This program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health together with Family TV. And we are delighted that you are with us. Edwin Austin Mukhalazi is my name. And we are with Mebo Murungi, our sign language interpreter. She has been away for some time, but we are glad she's back to take us through. And then, the house today is full. We have a special person. This is the face behind this whole arrangement of health pot. She's Dr. Christine Narad Dakayemba. She's a senior lecturer at the School of Public Health, but also the head of department, community health and behavior science at the School of Public Health. She's with us today and she's going to take us through. But we also have Lydia Kabuijam. She's a fellow, a research fellow at the School of Public Health, that is Makere University. And we are indeed delighted that you are with us. And Dr. Christine, kindly greet us some viewers. Good evening, viewers. And then Lydia. Good evening, viewers. Well, uh, Dr. Christine, in finding ways to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Of course, it was something new to all of us, and we didn't know what to do. So the president here in Uganda did, like some other presidents did in, in some other countries, and declared a lockdown. In that, schools were closed because we wanted, uh, he wanted to, they are trying to create safety of our children and the old people as well. And then, uh, our children are at home. They know they're in lockdown, schools are in lockdown, but the question is, do they really know, or do they really understand what COVID is, and probably the, the preventive measures that were set up? I believe you were a principal investigator in one of the research, um, uh, in one of the research assignments together with Lydia that were aimed at, at exploring the children's understanding of COVID-19. And we are delighted that you're here. You're going to share with us your experience. But before, I'd maybe ask you why, what were your intentions in carrying on this research? Dr. Christine. Thank you so much, uh, Adrian. Uh, first of all, for hosting us here to share with you our experiences and findings about uh, this study that we conducted yeah. about uh, children and their understanding of, uh, of COVID. So actually, last year in September, we set out to conduct a study. Almost a year now. Yes, almost a year mm -hmm. now. We set out a study to understand uh, whether the children could understand uh, the communication messages that were being sent out at that at that time. You know, at the beginning of the pandemic, there were a lot of messages. Yes. And remember, this was a new disease. So the Ministry of Health and other partners were sending out uh, so many messages. Yes. But at that time, you recall that uh, the perception was that the disease was affecting the adults and exactly. not, uh, not the children. So the communication messages were sort of more so uh, targeting the uh -huh. adult, uh, adults yeah. and not the children. Although later on the children were also uh, brought on board because we, we learned that uh, the children were also being uh, affected. So Where this, was the research conducted? So this study was conducted in Hoima district. Why Hoima among all places? Yes, why Hoima? At that time, you remember at the beginning of the pandemic, Hoima was one of the first districts that uh, received uh, COVID cases. And because of that, uh, in such districts where there were those uh, cases, uh, the districts are now very vigilant yeah. in providing information of uh, how people can prevent uh, can prevent the disease and uh, stop the spread of the disease. Okay. So because now such districts were well prepared and they were, uh, they were really at it giving this health education, we thought that this was a good ground to assess if the children, uh, how the children 
are understanding these messages? How are the children perceiving the disease uh, uh, generally? How long was this study? Uh, the study, I can say it took us around two months to conduct, uh, to conduct this study. How many children did you sample in this study? Did now, you sample the whole district? Uh, okay, no, not the entire district, but you know when we are conducting research, we have specific uh, procedures and steps that we, uh, we go through to select our study sample. But generally we selected uh, 272 children aged 10 to 13 years old. And these are the children that we interacted with during this study. I think before I leave you, I'll still need to you to tell us what the objectives of this study were. Yes, uh, the objectives of the objectives of this study uh, was one to understand uh, how the children uh, perceive or understand the COVID disease, and secondly, we wanted to know whether these children were adhering to the standard operation measures that we are being put uh, put in place. Did you did you achieve the, the the objectives of the study? Yes, we really achieved, and we got uh, good findings, which we actually want to share with you uh, today and with our viewers. We are delighted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah. So one of the main findings, I will not say everything that we found because of yes. them, but what we call say the main findings mm. in our study, we found that the children were knowledgeable about COVID. They knew about the COVID virus that it causes the COVID, uh, the COVID disease. They also knew how the disease is transmitted. That is, the disease is transmitted through uh, droplets. Then uh, they could also tell some of the symptoms, uh, the symptoms of the disease, including cough, uh, fever, difficulty in breathing, and a few of them were able to tell us about the sudden loss of taste and smell. Okay. So generally, they were knowledgeable about the disease. Mm. But our other finding was, they did uh, as much as they knew what to do, so actually, they knew these procedures, how to prevent the disease. They knew about uh, hand washing. They knew about wearing of the face masks. Uh, they also knew about keeping social distance. Actually, to them, when you would ask, talk to them, they would, they would call it corona distance. Mm. So they knew that people had to be Because very it. many sensitizing songs were calling it corona distance. Oh, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they were calling it corona distance. So they knew these measures. But our finding was that they did not know how to put in practice. They did not know how to correctly wash their hands, and they did not know how to correctly uh, put on the face masks. Uh, At that very point, before we exhaust the observations, I want Lydia to take us through what you found these people were, were calling put, uh, putting on face masks and what they were calling washing of hands. Because I understand there is that approved way of washing hands. And what did you find these children doing? Thank you so much. We did observations for all the 372 children that we studied. And we found that two in every 10 children, only two would wash their hands correctly. So the World Health Organization has a standard for washing, what they call hand washing. It's a six point standard, but for children you can stretch it to nine points. It has steps. If I could elaborate on the steps, mm. the first step is to wet the hands. Then you put soap. Mm -hmm. Then you rub the hands together. Mm. Then you focus on the nails. Rub the nails in the hands. Mm. Then for the other the hand, other. you repeat the same process. Then you wash the back, mm. focusing in between the fingers. Then you turn to the other side. You do the same? Yes. Then there is washing of the thumb. 
Or you, you, you wash it separately? You rub it separately, okay. steal the other side separately, then you can go through the process of rinsing. There is a, there is a, a habit, um, or after rinsing, the way uh, children and some old people clean and dry their hands. After r rinsing the hands, then they dry them by their clothes or... I was... Like the hand washing is not done until you've finished the whole process. So the last process in the hand washing is how we dry our hands, which is very critical. Yeah. The World Health and Ministry of Health encourage us to use a clean towel. It can be a serviette or a napkin. Or you hand, you air dry your hands. You can let them to dry on their cells, but not rubbing on your clothes. What about if I use a hanky? We are not sure how clean the <laughs> hanky is. So I, the ideal is that you leave the hands to dry. Okay. So many of the children would do... Chop, chop. I don't know that I've, <laughs> or I've demonstrated it in well enough. They would wash. If they get the soap, mm. it is there. Then they wash the hands are a bit folded, so the washing is not reaching all the. There is no rinsing even. Even when they rinse, they rim, they rub on the clothes, so that was not good. What about? But there's still room for improvement. <laughs> Surely. Mm -hmm. What about how were they putting on face masks? So as part of the study, we gave out face masks at the start of every interview. So that it would help us observe how the children were able to safely use the mask. These interviews took between 30 to 45 minutes, so it gave us ample time to observe. So none of the children, unfortunately, could use the mask correctly. Like seriously? Yes. None, not even none. one. Oh. You know that, that is so scary. At the start of the COVID, around March, around April, there, May, June, July. The first lockdown was in March. Yes, but as time came, went on, there was a lot of information and risk communication telling us how to wear masks. And then there were guidelines that were released, the steps of how to wear a mask correctly or safely use a mask. But none of the children were able to call, to perform those steps correctly. So we concluded none of the children could safely or correctly use masks. Maybe uh, before we go for a break, we really need to know what you think, what, what you call none of them was able to put on the mask correctly. Because very many of our viewers out there, and basically children, might be putting on masks, but they don't know the correct way. So they might be putting them on the very way those children were putting them on. What is that? Uh, what is that way that the children were putting the masks on? So the standard necessitates that you first wash your hands. Remember the hand washing we talked about, the correct hand washing over. No, class? like before even we go to the standard, how were they putting them on? When okay, when you dis uh, when they, you distributed the masks, how were they putting on these masks? Like a child has this mask and then what next for them? When you give the mask, the child will just grab the mask, put it on, whether it's covering the nozzle and mouth together. <laughs> Some were putting it on, covering the mouth. Others were leaving pockets of air in the side. So it was as much as they would have that face mask on, it was not being correctly done or safely done to be able to protect them or their families and friends from COVID. So that is how you draw your conclusion that none of them knew how to put on this mask. We observed the steps they took throughout the 45 minutes. So the first step we observed for was when I give you a mask, do you wash your hands? None were washing hands. The second step is you get the mask from its packaging. Now, we, we shall get to that later when we, we will come to what you people recommend. Uh, uh, Dr. Christine, I'm now back to you. You are still telling us 
about uh, your observations. And that was, that was one of the observations that were still existing. What are these other observations? Okay, uh, thank you so much, Adrian. Now, among the other findings that we, we found were that uh, uh, the children were anxious about this disease. They were anxious about the future and the impact of COVID onto themselves and also the communities. For example, they were worried if they will ever go back to school because remember it was locked down and the schools had also been uh, closed. So they were wondering, would they ever go back to school? They were wondering, their parents, would they get the money to take them back to school or to even do other uh, support other issues in the, in the homes because many, many parents were not working. But the other touching uh, issue that we, they were expressing, they were worried about their colleagues. They had now observed that some of their colleagues were getting married and some of them were becoming uh, pregnant. We had a child who actually mentioned oh. that, you know, uh, so and so is not going to go back to school because she's now uh, pregnant. So generally, they were also worried as much as the adults are, we are also worried, mm. but these children are also worried about the impact of uh, COVID. Well, let's uh, shortly go for a commercial break, and then when we come back, we are going to continue with what the findings of this survey were. We are coming back shortly. As you think about the Lord just taking over your case, and you are no longer in the midst of it, and he says, fear not. Okay. Demons from the mountains scream, scream and leave. In the name of Demons the from the from the graves scream in and leave. In the name, of, the Jesus. name Jesus. of Jesus. Yes, we can. We can clear the debt of church house. And I want to invite you to give generously to the love gift. May God bless you as you give. Welcome back from the commercial break. This is Health Pot. Edwin Austin Colors is my name. And this program is brought to you by Makere University School of Public Health. We are with Nebo Mulungi, the Sun Language Interpreter. And then we have Lydia Kawijem and Dr. Christine Kayemba. So, before we went for the commercial break, you were actually telling us, taking us through the observations. And is there any observation that you've left out? Uh, no, not really. Uh, I mentioned... So according uh, to your survey, uh, you were satisfied that you observed everything you wanted to observe? Yeah, we achieved our objectives. Okay. Uh, we wanted to understand uh, how the children understand the disease in terms of what causes it, how it is transmitted, and how it is prevented. Now and we achieved that. Um, I think Lydia is going to take us through because every every survey must have a recommendation after finding out. 
So what are some of those recommendations? I want, uh, I want you to take us through the steps of hand washing. Uh, you, you talked about the steps. You talked about the steps earlier, mm -hmm. but I think they're not. You didn't exhaustively talk about this whole thing. And someone out there, just in case they, they have just joined in, they need to know because I think it is very important for us to know how effective we can wash our hands. Thank you so much. And then the masks as well. So I'll start with the steps for using the face mask correctly. Yes. So we observed, as I said, we gave out masks at the start to help us take around 30 to 45 minutes observing how the children use those masks. So what we observed was that none of them were able to correctly wear and sustain use of mask correctly in those 45 minutes. For example, when you give out the mask, the ideal is that you're suppo well, before you wear a mask, you're supposed to wash your hands correctly for at least 20 seconds like it's recommended. How can a child who doesn't even have a watch count the 20 seconds? A child, we of late there have been innovations that say that a child can sing, you can sing a birthday song times two times. This common song, happy birthday. Happy birthday to you two times. Or you say out the alphabet. From A to Z? A. Which interval do you? Okay. You take a, a drop. A, a, B, C, D, until you reach Z two times. And if you're still washing your hands by then, you're doing the correct thing. But depending on the age, you can do different things. If your child is at that age where they might apply, they can do simple multiplication to help them remember. But back to the wow. observation. These, these measures are also help a child to, you know, to sharpen their minds. Because if a child can take on the multiplication, if a child can recite A to Z and all that. Mm. Mm. So, other than the washing of hands before the use of mask, we're observing how does the child actually wear the mask. Yep. The standard is that the mask, before you put it on, you have to observe it for damages, or if it is dirty, if you're using a cloth mask, which we use more, more times. If it is Some people have gone ahead to wash these disposable masks as well, and then put them on again. The disposable mask, like the word is, is supposed to be used only once and then discarded. So you're supposed to observe whether your mask is, does not have damages or is clean. For We use cloth masks. So once you observe it is clean, then you're supposed to hold by the loops, then put behind the ears. Then you adjust the mask to make sure it covers your nose and mouth, but by the sides, so that there are that no loops. That is now the problem. Face. Some some sides are open, you know. <laughs> so that there, there are no loops behind that leave space. And then some other some other children, guide. Well, I don't know whether it is because the, the the mask is too big. They cross ring the mask and then do this, and then it makes it ends up opening this part as well. What do you say about that? It is very important that we wear a mask that is fitting, that covers the nose, the mouth, and does not leave looped air gaps in the sides. Then after that, we, as we were observing, after you've worn the mask in the 30 or 45 minutes with you, how do you behave? Most children, most children were lowering their masks, to have, have it below their mouth and nose so that they can talk. Others lower the mask and only cover their mouth, which is not right. Then we're also observing the standard is you should not touch the front of your mask. Like? Yes. Remember, as you're talking to different people, some droplets of saliva may land on the mask. You don't want to get them into your hands and touch your other parts. parts. So, so some parts. of them were touching the masks in. 
And then also the aspect of removing the mask. You're supposed to remove it in such a way that you protect yourself from getting the outside layer of the mask getting onto your body, but you also protect the other, rest, the other people so that you just don't remove it in that rough way. You need to remove it by the loops gently, take it out from your face, and then put it in the right place. For example, if there is a polythene bag where it has been, as you prepare to keep, keep its hygiene, then you have to wash it and then dry it. You wash it before you keep it? You can keep it because now for ex and then you wash it later, depending on what you're doing. But the ideal is that the mask should be washed, if it's a reusable one, before it is used, every time before it is used. And then again, wash hands correctly. Dr. Christine, yes. what else do you recommend parents should do? Because now that our children are home, uh, parents have plenty of time with. Days back we used to say, teachers will tell, do this, teachers will do that, but now our children are home. They are with parents, no more teachers for now, maybe later when schools are open. What do you think should be done by these parents? Okay, thank you. Uh, now that the ch we have our children at home, I'm appealing to the parents or the guardians or any other adults who are staying with the children to teach them how to correctly carry out these measures. Actually, most of our parents don't know how to, to do them themselves. I think it is important that in the next episode, we get um, people to practically teach our children and our parents how to effectively wash their hands and how to effectively put on the mask correctly. Yeah. Yes, thank you so much for that opportunity. Actually, we have been working with some children whom we have trained to wash, uh, to wash hands and also wear the masks correctly. So since you are giving us an opportunity to come back, we shall come back and be able to show you with the children how these measures are correctly done. We shall be grateful. Thank you. Yes. And what else do you recommend parents should do before we wind up? Uh, as much as possible, let the, the, the parents be able to, to help these children do uh, this hand washing correctly. Because, when, by the way, when they do the hand washing correctly, they are not only preventing COVID, but there are also other diseases that we are uh, preventing. And we know that we have so many other uh, diseases that are, are spread through or that can be prevented through uh, hand washing. And then uh, we are very hopeful that uh, at least maybe our schools will open so such that when the students go back to school, then also the teachers can take it from there and uh, help these children be able to carry out these uh, procedures. I also want to mention that we know that uh, uh, we've now gone uh, ahead and uh, we, have vac uh, uh, we have vaccines. And but they're vac for old people, uh, yeah, for people yeah. above 18 years. Exactly. So now the vaccination is targeting the adults. Yeah. So we know that the children are still at uh, the mercy of being able to, uh, to carry out these uh, SOPs correctly. And we know that uh, this is the way that we can protect the what? Uh, the, ch the, the children. So together, let's try our best to see that we empower the children, uh, do these SOPs correctly so that they can protect themselves and uh, also protect the community generally. Okay. Lydia, yes, please. any recommendation? Uh, given that the children expressed uncertainty and worry, about COVID. I think it's also important that the parents, caregivers, and anybody that they stay with tries to provide them hope that, you know, this is COVID, it's a season, it will pass, but we need to be, we need to protect ourselves and protect our friends. Wow. Thank you so much. We are indeed grateful for 
this evening. You've blessed our evening. I believe whoever has watched this program, their lives and their mentality towards COVID-19 have not remained the same. Because since it is something we are still learning, people have a lot of questions. But I believe most of the questions have been answered today in today's episode. This is Health Pot. You shouldn't miss Health Pot every single Friday at exactly 7 p.m. And then we have a repeat on Wednesday at 10, no longer at 9. It is at 10 p.m. Uh, sorry, 10 a.m. in the morning on Wednesday. Thank you so much for watching Health Pod. Thank you so much for loving Family TV. This program is brought to you by Makele Universal School of Public Health, together with Family TV. Edwin Austin Mkalas is my name. I will have uh, before I go, I will request Dr. Christine to give us a closing remark and then Lydia will also give us a closing remark and then we shall go. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Yes. Uh, my last remarks, uh, I would like to, uh, to acknowledge and thank the government of Uganda that provided us with the funds through the Research and Innovation Fund uh, that is extended to Makerere University that enabled us to conduct this study. Uh, we also acknowledge the, uh, the administration of uh, Hoima district, uh, the administrative officials in Hoima district, and also our participants, uh, the children, who enabled us to uh, conduct this study. Oh, thank you so much. Lydia, your closing remark. To add um, to what Christine has said, we are grateful to the children who were willing to talk up to us about what they knew, who were our respondents, even with all the uncertainty at that time, they are willing to talk. But I also want to encourage the public that and give hope that this is a season. It will come. It is there. We are about to overcome it. We just need to help our children and to maintain the standard operation procedures correctly and also as adults and members of society to uphold the COVID prevention me measures correctly. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We are grateful that you spared this evening to be with us and educate our, our, our audience. Thank you so much. We are indeed delighted. And thank you so much whoever has been watching this program from wherever you started, uh, we started from up to now. We have to go. But before I go, Mebo Murungi, our sign language interpreter, Edwin Austin Mukalas is my name. I've worked with Brenda Tijakira and Jenna Jal, of course, the producers of this show, and then Tony Santo on social media and Bantam in transmission. Have a good night. Enjoy your weekend. God bless you. <laughs>